December 31st, 2015. This is a story about finding lost photos in the middle of Zimbabwe. We have an SD card, two gigabytes. I'm not sure whose it is, but let's find out. I'll get back to this in a second, but first. In 2011, a guy named Todd Bieber found a film role in a New York City blizzard. Seeking to find some clue as to who the owner was, he went and developed the film. There were some good shots in there. Mostly a snowy New York City, but the photos were really good. There was even a glimpse of the photographer alongside his friend. But who were they? Todd reached out through YouTube with a video that got almost 2 million views. And because the internet is the internet, eventually someone cracked the case. The photographer lived in Paris, and in a nice touch, Todd went out and returned his film. A happy ending. So what happened to me and my friends over 2015 winter break was similar. Five of us went to Zimbabwe for a safari at Huangay Park, most known for this dentist killing this lion. We saw a lot of great things. But then there was something we didn't expect to see. On one afternoon, my buddy Weston spotted a two gigabyte SanDisk card in its plastic case. There we were, 7,771 miles away from home in New York, surrounded by nothing but animals and quiet. Funny enough, the first person I thought of was Todd Bieber. Maybe this was the digital version of his analog film discovery. I went to my laptop to find out. And... There were pictures in there. 13 of them. One photo taken precisely four years earlier on New Year's Eve 2011. The other 12, February 4th, 2012. First, the New Year's Eve picture. Sure enough, New Year's Eve. A group of girls. Maybe they were in college? Not sure. And then the other 12 photos. Look like a party. In a basement. They're playing beer pong. The photos showed four girls in total. There was this blurry guy, and this guy. A shot of a basket. A jersey on a wall. There's even a photo that's just all black. All right, so I didn't find the Zimbabwean Ansel Adams, but it didn't stop me from trying to figure out who owned the card. Time to put on the detective cap. So the pictures were taken in a span of six minutes between 10.07 and 10.13. Now this girl is the only girl who was in these photos and the New Year's picture. Maybe she's the owner. There were jerseys, February timestamp. So I googled Super Bowl 2012, the Giants play the Patriots. This party would have happened the night before, on Saturday. I was right. This girl's holding up something that says Super Bowl 2012. What else? None of the pictures had geotagged information, so I began hunting for any other indicators of where they're from. Here's a Pats jersey, maybe they're from New England. But this girl had a Bucks jersey, and this one a Packers one. Can't count on sports teams. They were drinking Pabst and Budweiser, two brands absolutely everywhere in America. That didn't help much. This jersey? Maybe it has a customized family name on the back. Way too blurry. So I downloaded some de-blur software. Okay, that did absolutely nothing. Time to do a reverse image search. Maybe these pics were uploaded to social media. No matches. I heard that Facebook had a face recognition algorithm or something. No results. But then again, I have no idea if that would actually work. I went back to the details of the photos. A Kohl's box. Found out that Kohl's is in 49 states. And these girls are not from Hawaii. Narrowing it down. Uh, I found a board game called Squeezed Out, published by Pavilion Games in 1999. All right, what am I doing? Here's a sticker, Megastore on the water heater. Some giant furnace chain. Could have been shipped in from anywhere. But then, I think I found my big clue. On this photo, there's a metallic box. And if you look close enough, there's what looks to be a sticker with a phone number. Deep blur software? Uh, no. But in this photo, sure enough, 7627994. But feeling really like a stalker now, I Google the phone number. And there you have it. It's a company called Surfco Oil. Same yellow and blue colors as a sticker. And the company is based in Fairfield County, Connecticut. Someone here is from Fairfield County, Connecticut. Hello, I was wondering if you've made any deliveries more than four years ago to a basement with a ping pong table in it? What? Sorry? Alright, it's here I realize I don't know what else to do, so this is where I stop and maybe the internet takes over. It's a crazy thing when you think about a card sitting in Zimbabwe untouched for that long through arid heat and foot traffic of really large animals. Not to get all deep, but this experience has a pretty good astronomical parallel. If you look up at the sky 29 degrees north, near the Southern Cross, you'll spot Alpha Centauri. Because it's four light years away, the light takes exactly that long to reach our eyes. We're stuck always seeing the star four years in the past, like I am with these photos. It's interesting to think about these guys living their lives somewhere four years later. They're probably out in the real world, paying rent, having jobs. Maybe some of them are married. 
The photos I found are a little less romantic than Todd's, found romantically in a blizzard on romantic film negatives. Mine feels a little bit more mundane, certainly more disposable. But if these were mine, how would I feel if these photos entered my life four years later? Would the very fact these photos once didn't exist in my memory as having been taken compel me to place a different type of value on them now that I'm aware of their existence? Or would I just end up dumping them with thousands of other digital photos on cold, heartless external hard drives? Anyway, it's time to take a page from Todd's book. If the internet knows who these people are, I'm gonna be like Todd. Will I go to Europe? Probably not. Definitely not Hawaii. But even if it's Fairfield County, Connecticut, I'll take a train to a cafe, hand the car back to its rightful owner, and exchange safari stories over coffee. Please email me here if you know who the owner is. Thanks.